So let me introduce myself a bit. I'm, I come from Pakistan and I'm like the only Pakistani Ubuntu community member and maybe a friend of mine that I actually inspired to be a member uh, after, my, after me. So I'm kind of the star of Ubuntu community uh, officially in Pakistan. I, yeah, I work for Crossbar. Uh, now, it's a German company that specializes in uh, like low-level web sockets and network stuff. We create the famous router that is uh, used to uh, introduce remote procedure calls and, our, and like PubSub uh, for different connected services. So it's a very powerful framework that we actually work on. And uh, I've been part of the Ubuntu community since 2010. Uh, even before that, I actually started in 2009. I was once a GNOME Foundation member as well. They kicked me out after one year because there seems to be a way you have to actually uh, like prove that you continue to work. So I was also working with Canonical for seven, well, six years. So well, so I, so the project that I actually wanted to introduce is a very interesting one. Uh, I think uh, do you, there, there have been, in recent years, um, different operating systems have been developing d new features that have been missing in Ubuntu desktop or maybe uh, in the Ubuntu side of things. Uh, Apple has this very famous software called AirDrop and if you really uh, ever find a way to inspect on the local network, you will realize that every iPhone is actually sending its name, its zero conf on the network. It's, it's like uh, enabling, they have discovery enabled by default in all, on all the devices. Uh, what Ubuntu doesn't have is the network discovery. So this project tries to introduce inter-process communication on the local network so that all the processes that are running on different devices, for example, it could be your desktop, it could be your mobile phone, it could be Raspberry Pi even. So all these devices are able to communicate very easily. And the paradigm that we use here is based on remote procedure calls, like request response based, and then at the same time, there is also another paradigm for publish subscribe. So what this helps is that all the events that are happening on the desktop are actually published in such a way that different devices that are listening to those events uh, can actually uh, like respond to them. So it, it's obviously, as I told, it has network discovery at its core. And what happens now, it's fully end-to-end -end encrypted. So what, what we have at the, at the end of the day it's a device that is discoverable on the local network, like you and I are sitting in the same room, we have the Wi-Fi devices, I can actually send you a file without uh, getting your IP address and without you enabling Samba or something like that. Um, I can maybe lock my own desktop from a mobile phone when I go out, because let's say I'm working in a co-working space and I want to make sure that I didn't forget to lock my desktop. So I could actually send a command from a phone and that would actually lock my uh, desktop screen. So, so this, this stuff actually came from the help of a few of the nice canonical guys. Uh, Jamie Strandberg uh, has been very helpful. I don't know, oh, um, well, if not all, I guess some of you already know about him. So uh, for the last two years, he has actually helped me a lot in getting this project to this state. So some of the use cases that it project introduces and some of the features that are already implemented. You could obviously share a file on the local network. I just talked about that. You could lock the screen. You could actually create a presentation remote, like, like, that, like this one. This is a hardware-based remote, but I could create something very similar for my Android device uh, that would have like the next and back button. It would send input, like it would say, it's, uh, I would register two APIs, one for the next uh, page up, the other for the page down, and my device would actually send that command and my desktop would execute that key and at the end of the day what you would see is these slides would be changing. Uh, so this kind of opens uh, lots of opportunities. And at, at this software in itself is very extensible. Like, for example, if you are a C++ developer, you can write an extension for this project. If you are a Python developer, you can write that. If you are a JavaScript developer, you can write that as well. And maybe even Java, Java as well. So all these languages are supported in such a way that you could write your simple component that actually hooks up to this environment and adds a new functionality. I actually wrote a component that would move my mouse on the desktop, something KDE does as well, KDE Connect. I wrote a component that would actually uh, write in some keyboard input that KDE Connect does as well. But the point is, 
uh, in, in terms of KDE Connect, you are actually limited to single languages. Uh, in this case, you are actually, uh, you have this opportunity to use any languages that implements the WAMP protocol. It's a WAMP protocol, is a sub protocol that is based on top of WebSocket. So I think uh, there is a big library support for it and uh, uh, many languages actually support this. So what I actually came back uh, with a set of libraries that are written, but we as a company actually have a, a longer list of libraries that uh, support this uh, protocol. And at the end of the day, we can realize maybe an iOS user could actually write uh, an interface, an application that talks to my Ubuntu desktop, might, that might actually also work. So one, one other feature is uh, this technology that we are using in the background it's kind of cross-platform and cross-operating system. Well, that's a new one. It could actually work on Windows, on a Mac, on, on any Ubuntu desktop, on a Linux-based system. Uh, my default medium of like distribution is Snap packages. I, I generally care about Snap because I only use Snaps uh, as a like way of using my apps. But still, I believe that uh, since, since the backend, the server that I'm using is all based on Python. It runs just fine on, on Windows as well. And uh, this, this kind of opens an opportunity for having a harmony between different operating systems, like creating a framework that is uh, useful in between different operating systems. For example, I like to share that. For example, if I write a component that runs on Windows and another component that runs on Ubuntu, if these two computers are actually talk to each other without any like without any problem, let's say if they are able to share files, if they are able to communicate, uh, like different apps that are able to communicate in these environments, uh, the, this would open lots of opportunities. And uh, over, the, over the next couple of months or maybe years, I plan to add more and more features to this project. And uh, maybe in the long, at, if it gets really stable enough, I would like maybe at one day uh, to maybe to ship that as part of Ubuntu. But obviously that's uh, really a long shot and I need really, it really needs to go to lots and lots of iterations. So yeah, um, I, well, uh, so, so, so the project is today installable very easily. Um, it's a snap, uh, it pulls in three snaps. Uh, uh, one of the snap is the daemon that actually enables remote procedure calls, discovery, and encryption. So all the communication on the network is actually encrypted and uh, with very high level of encryption actually. It's, it uses CryptoSign and uh, uh, ED25519 as a curve. And uh, so basically even if we don't have like TLS enabled on the local network, all the communication is secure, highly secure. And uh, uh, so the Descon D is a daemon that runs in the background. Descon, the software itself, uh, is what exposes basic functionality, but there is room for other features. Anyone could write a component, anyone could write their own software and then just hook to this one. Uh, if we were really playing sort of analogy, it would be like Dbus, but on the local network. It's, it's the Dbus on the local network. So your Ubuntu computers, your Linux computers, could actually talk to each other, their processes could talk to each other through an API, but on the local network. Uh, in future, uh, for we at Crossbar are actually extending the Crossbar product, the software. This is an open source project that I do in my free work, free time. So I just wanted to make it clear that this is not something that Crossbar is paying me to do. This is a volunteer work, but it uses the technology that Crossbar is creating. And they were generous enough to actually send me to this event. And uh, so what, what the potential is that we can actually make all of this through the internet. Right now, the target is to make all the services available on the local network, but there is a server crossbar itself. On the, if we run that on, let's say, a digital ocean instance, all the devices could actually connect to each other to the server. And what that enables us is we can, control our own computers while not being on the same network. So that's 
a future idea that I'm trying to explore, but I'm not sure about that due to security reasons. I just want to make sure that the current state of software is super secure and super stable before adding new features like uh, the internet support. But that's something on the cards as well. And uh, I just, I'll just, uh, that's mostly it for my talk. Uh, so one of my friends was actually helping me uh, write the Android app. So I just wanted to thank these two people uh, they have been very helpful. Jamie has been very helpful because over the last couple of years, he has actually wrote two interfaces for me specifically. There was a one interface that would actually allow you to change the brightness of your laptop screen remotely. So uh, now a, a confined snap can actually change the laptop uh, brightness of an Intel laptop. And then there is another interface he wrote for me was to allow to lock the laptop screen. So these are two SnapD interfaces that are very helpful for me. So. And this other guy, that my friend, uh, he actually uh, helped me, Bilal, he actually helped me write the Android application that does all the magic. And uh, so if you, if anyone ever wants to go for the project, it's, it's DeskCon on GitHub. And uh, it, it, it's not just a single component, it has like six, seven sub projects. And one of them, is actually an extension for Google Chrome. And I think if you all use Android devices when you uh, watch a video on Netflix, the brightness generally increases. And when you exit Netflix, the brightness goes down. So I added a similar functionality for the desktop. So the extension sends a, sends a request to the daemon on the same laptop. That, that laptop then increases the brightness to the value that is set in that extension's configuration. And when Netflix exits, the brightness level comes back down. So as I said, the idea was to add missing functionalities that other operating systems already have. And this is just the beginning, in my opinion. And I'm going to actually try and ad advertise this project more and more in the coming months and even, uh, even find more open source contributors to the project. Obviously, everything is open source and always will be. But that's all. Thank you. the key exchange. So uh, I'm using CryptoSign. So each client generates a pub key pair, a private and public key pair, but I only send the public key over the network. So the secret actually never travels the wire. Like secret stays on the devices. Uh, I send the public key, that is only used for the key exchange. So I haven't implemented my own protocol for that. It's uh, the CryptoSign is part of the autobahn, part of the crossbar itself. So it's already there. Uh, we just send our own private public keys over the network and the handshake just happens. So uh, all the traffic after that is super secure and uh, highly encrypted. Uh, and, and the curve ED25519 uh, was created outside of the NIST. So we can trust that for not having a backdoor. <laughs> so yeah. I think I want Ubuntu users to be actually, well, like, uh, use this as a framework in the future for writing their own components. Uh, even though I have added few initial functionalities, what I actually want is people to innovate around this framework that I created and uh, unleash the power of this software. And, uh, well, I think uh, it would be, if it works great in the in the long term, it would be a great addition to the overall in ecosystem that we have around Ubuntu. Thanks. All right. So, do you have any question? <laughs> great. Um, then I guess we can wrap it up now, and uh, I will uh, I will make sure to write much more on Medium going forward. Previously, we had this option to write on Google+, Plus, but it's, since it's gone, now the com communication with the community is kind of distorted. So I'm trying to make sure that I start writing more and more on Medium. Sure, uh, that I would be very happy. Yes, sure. I will actually get in touch with you, stay in touch with you. Thank you. All right. 
and that that is it then. <laughs>